We are on our fourth week with the series on the spiritual gifts, uh, more than anything else. What is more important is transforming what are natural gifts into the spiritual gifts. Uh, perhaps with this study or that we're going to be doing end of the month, it may be finding, affirming your spiritual gifts, but at the same time, may be able to seek your natural gifts. And turning that natural gifts into spiritual gifts is what this is all about. For example, I've said this before last week, if you like to catch, like Peter, like to catch fish, the whole idea is transforming, catching fish to catching people that may turn into the gifts of evangelism. If you like the party, I'm okay with that. It's gift also. You may not just know it yet, but you just may have the, the gift of lifting people up. And if you transform into spiritual gifts by allowing Holy Spirit to flow through you, it then becomes a spiritual gift of encouragement and even fellowship. What's the difference between fellowship and, and parties? Same kind of thing. It's slightly different. Everyone has gifts or two. And your gifts can turn into spiritual gifts once the Holy Spirit flows through you. The fundamental difference between the natural gift and the spiritual gift that we talked about last week is this. Gift is just a gift if you hold on to it. What are you going to do if you just hold on to it? However, your natural gift, the gift will turn into a spiritual gift if you use it to strengthen other people's faith. That is throughout the scripture. The gift that we receive has a purpose. And the purpose is not to edify myself. It's not just to strengthen myself. But use that Holy Spirit that flows through us to help others' faith. If you have a gift of catching, as we talked about, you use it not for this, your own sake. You can turn that into spiritual gift. If you don't, you know what happens? We love to catch. It goes into the desiring something else, like trying to catch more money and fame. But once the Holy Spirit gets hold of you, and anoint you, then the gift of catching can be transformed to evangelism, shepherding, even, or even catching the continual flow of faith. David Silk, a couple of weeks ago, taught us spiritual gift is supernatural talent or ability given. To you by God. It's not something that we create on our own. It's given to you by God. For what purpose? To serve others. How? Under the direction of the Holy Spirit. So there, when we have a certain spiritual gift, we are not to boast about it. It's given to us to use it for others. Why do we get birthday gifts? Why do you get birthday gifts? It's simply people around you, they love you. Simple. Not because it's your birthday. It's because they love you. Why do we get these gifts from God? Because God is love, and he loves you. Really simple. 
And God says repeatedly in the Bible, when he gives these different kinds of gifts, but it's of the same spirit, the spirit that which is love. And if you don't have love, you can have all the gifts in the world, all the talents, all the ability. If there is no love, it means nothing. It no longer becomes your spiritual gifts. It's just something that you, you think that you have. And this is very important in understanding the overarching reason for God giving us these gifts. It's not for us to hold on to. You see, after God telling us about this dif- different kind of gifts, he clearly states what to do with it. Just as he is love, he commanded us to love others with our gifts. Galatians 5.14, the entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. God gave us all this gifts, or about to give you gifts, so that you can fulfill this command. And at the end of 1 Corinthians 12, God writes, And now I will show you the most excellent way. How to exercise, how to use, how to demonstrate the gifts. It's, some, it's a verse that you're very familiar with. But it's good that we remind you once again, before we dive into different spiritual gifts. If I speak in the tongue of angels, if I have a gift of a prophecy, if I have a gift of faith that can move mountains, if I give all that I possess and give it to the poor, but if I don't have love, I gain nothing. The gifts you receive, the spiritual gift that you think you have, the natural gift that you think you have, if there is no love contained, if love is not flowing through it, it means nothing to God. So the spiritual gift is about love carried by the Holy Spirit. So first week, David Seal gave an overview of the gift of spirit. Second week, Luke Acre addressed address the prophecy and exhortation, which is encouragement. The third week, David Silk once again addressed the giving, administration, teaching. And last week, we studied about spiritual gifts of shepherding, mercy, and serving. So today, we will address faith, discernment, and wisdom. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6 says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. We must really understand this. Oh, you got that gift, and I got this gift. So we must be different. No, it's the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but it's the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. How do we explain this? That there are different gifts, but of the same spirit. The best way, I think, I can explain to you, it's like this. Just like there are so many different kinds of automobiles, trucks, SUVs, sedans, coupes, tanks, I don't know, so many different things. But they all run on fuel. There are so many different kinds or types of light fixtures for different purposes to light the world. But they all run on the same flow of electricity. Now just as electricity flows to light and activate, the Holy Spirit flows to manifest into different gifts for the purpose of lifting others. That's what the scripture is teaching us. Verse 7. 
Now to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given, given for the common good. What common good is the Bible talking about? To love others, to strengthen others' faith, and to serve others. Are you doing this? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years you've been calling yourself believer. Are you loving others? Are you strengthening the faith of others? Are you serving others? With that question, let's look at today's scripture. The Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8 through 11. To one, there is given through the Holy Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit, the same Spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. In verse 11, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. So let's begin with our first spiritual gift for today, faith. Yes, faith is one of those spiritual gifts. But I'd like to add on to that, the spiritual gift of faith is just as special as others. Because God has given all of us this gift of faith, especially to all believers. Don't say, I don't have spiritual gift of faith. That's somebody else in this church has it. I just believe in God. I just believe in Jesus. I just come to church. What do you think you have? Spiritual gift of faith. That's why you are a believer. You have been given the spiritual gifts of faith. That's why you are able to pronounce, proclaim that Jesus is Son of God. And it's my Savior. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Because you had a faith, this isn't something about believing in uh, other faith. This is a spiritual faith. When you believe in Christ, that's a spiritual faith that you have. And you, through that, you receive grace. And this for from from yourself, it is not it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to what? To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Remember, it's a gift. It's a gift. Just as grace is a gift, the faith is a gift to all Christians. You all have it. Don't dismiss it. Because we receive salvation only through spiritual faith. And we studied this for like two months during our last series. Now once you receive this gift, God gave us spiritual gift of faith to do something with it. To demonstrate this faith in loving others, in encouraging others, in serving others. So you can tell, you can encourage others, better days are yet to come. That takes spiritual faith to say, God has something for you. Just wait a little bit. Who in the Bible has demonstrated this faith? Job. 
He was blameless. He was upright. He shone evil. He was a man of faith, wisdom, and discernment. He has all the three attributes of spiritual gift that we're going to be talking about. Job had it. He exercised all those gifts, demonstrating to us that there is hope in God. Look at all this conversation Job had with the friends. It's about hope in God. Just wait, my friends. Just wait. Don't try to decide. It's not your time to make a decision and try to be discerned about what is right or wrong. Just hope in, the, in God and wait and for his time. What about Horatio Spafford? You know who he is? Everybody knows this guy. We sing his songs all the time. He wrote a song called All Is Well With My Soul. He wrote this song after, I forget whether it was four or five of his daughters drowned in the Atlantic Ocean when the cruise ship collided with another ship. And Next few days, when he uh, went, went near that sea as he was going to uh, London or England to meet up with his wife, as he was passing through that, the valley of death in ocean. And the captain told me, this is about the place where the other ship sank. That's when he wrote this song. All is well with my soul. That's spiritual faith. I'm in trouble. I'm in, I'm hurting. I feel like I want to rebel to God. But Spafford had a solid spiritual gift. Being able to demonstrate to others, I have hope. There must be reason for this. And look what he did with that faith. He helped us. He comforted us. He gave us hope. All of us throughout the world is singing this hymnal, All is Well with My Soul. Me, I'm far from Job. I don't know about Spafford. Not quite as good as him. I am far from being blameless. I rebelled to God so many times. When I was in that situation. I keep asking God, why are you doing this to me? Not like Spafford. But one day in the hospital, the spirit flowed within me to accept the outcome. What's the outcome? The outcome that is uncertainty of what is going to happen, but with the certainty that God is going to do something with this. That's spiritual gift. As I embraced this faith in spirit, I know through the many testimonies that I was able to help a lot of people in a similar situation. That's the purpose of God giving us spiritual gifts. Spiritual gift of faith may be defined as the special gift whereby the Holy Spirit provides the believers with the extraordinary confidence in God's what? God's promise. Having confidence in God's promise, that which is tomorrow, that which is uncertain, but knowing that God is going to do something with this. Hebrews 11, 1, 3 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Abraham was commended for this. Moses was commended for this. Noah was commended for this. And all the godly men and women of the Bible were commended for this. And verse 3 of the Hebrews chapter 11. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made from what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, Noah obeyed 
the warning from God about what was going to happen. By faith, Jacob worshipped God all the way to the end. By faith, not knowing where, not knowing how Moses left Egypt. By faith, people passed through the Red Sea. Do you think it was easy to follow Moses to go right through the Red Sea? Think about it. How many people, how many leaders, how many friends are saying, let's go. And you say, not for me. I bet we read about it. I bet it was extremely, extremely difficult for all these people, Israelites, to follow Moses through that Red Sea. When either side, if you have seen in some movies, the water was ready to engulf you. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after people had marched around them for seven days. Why is this faith? Hebrews 11, 39, 40. And this man of faith, though they trusted God and won his approval, God's approval, but none of them received or that God had promised them. That's kind of sad. This is all about God's promise. Yes, but it says they they didn't receive. They did not receive what God promised. But you you can't read the Bible with just one verse. You keep on reading it. Okay. Verse forty says, "For God wanted them to wait and share the even better rewards that were prepared for us." You have to say Amen to that. You know. You see, that's the spiritual gift of faith. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. To sum it up, God gives all Christians, you and I, the saving faith. The spiritual gift of faith is given so that they can be encouraging to others by saying, Don't worry. Better days are yet to come. That's God's promise. Now, what about discernment? Now, discernment is not just about knowing what is right or wrong. Biblically, the spiritual discernment is different than simply knowing right from wrong in our daily, everyday situations. The biblically... It's the insight, it's a spiritual insight to be able to distinguish between spirits. New James, New King James calls it, to another God gave discerning spirit, discernment. New Living Translation has elaborated a little bit. The ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from Another spirit. So if you have believers, you think it's believers, if you have a churchgoers say something to you, you need to be able to discern whether this is truly from God or somebody's opinion. Huge difference. It's not about making a right judgment or decision. But when discernment is combined with the spirit, that's when it becomes spiritual discernment. What is it? Knowing if someone is speaking from true word of God or from false teachers. Knowing who is truly a prophet for God or just false prophet. Knowing if a miracle is from God or from evil spirit. Let me give you an example. Example that you all know so very well. Adam and Eve, did they have the spiritual gift of discernment? Yeah, somebody said, no. With the confidence, I agree. They failed that miserably. <clears throat> That's why we're all in this mess. Thanks, Adam and Eve. When the serpent <clears throat> was speaking to them, 
to go and eat that fruit from that tree, they did not know whether it was God speaking or it was evil spirit speaking. I perhaps I guess they knew that it wasn't God, but maybe it was some godly advice. They didn't have the discernment of knowing the serpent was actually evil spirit. Incidentally, what is so interesting about the Bible is this. I think you have a little aha moment here. Incidentally, let me ask you, what was the name of the tree? It's called tree of good and evil. Tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's a discernment. God is saying you got to have a discernment. If you don't have it, if you don't think you don't have it, one of the best things you can do is to hang out with a Christian friend who has this gift and seek advice. Throughout the Old Testament, the Bible says, seek counsel. Seek counsel. See, that itself is discernment. Ability, talent, or two, ask question. Get counsel. Not one, maybe two, minimum, whether it's of spirit or of evil spirit. Second thing you can do is continue to dwell in the spirit of God so you can know the difference. You can feel the spirit. If you experience Holy Spirit again and again, you can feel the Spirit. You say, well, see, I'm not so sure about that. Let me share with you what I think uh, can help you with this. Do you love money? It's okay to say yes. Do you value money? Do you know the difference between the real money from counterfeit money? A knowledge would be good money would be good, counterfeit money would be evil. Do you know the difference between the two? Well, I understand that all the bank tellers are trained to know the difference between counterfeit money and the genuine money. How do they know? How are they trained? How do you think they are trained to know the difference between the real money and a counterfeit money? Do you think they will give an example of hundreds of different counter monies? That's not what they do. What I was told was this. They are trained to take the real money And they touch it, and touch it, and they touch it, and they smell it, and they smell it, and they crumble, and they crumble, and see how the money look like, feel like, and behave. You're getting the point. Once you do that, when you have a counterfeit money, and you do this, you touch it a little bit, you whatever you do this, and you can feel, you can hear, you can know the difference. Discernment is a very similar thing. When you dwell in the spirit of God, you can begin to tell when something is not real. And when you think you're not quite there yet, that's when you need lots of counsel. Ask your counsel. Ask your solid friends. Hey, I'm receiving this. Do you think I should go that way or not? Remember, all the spirit, spirits are of the same. There are different kinds of spirit. Uh, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. So if we dwell in him, if we continue to experience the Holy Spirit, we can then receive the gift of discernment. 
when we are trying to do the survey or study about your natural gift of uh, spiritual gift and the next month, October, when we're done with the series, it's really about two things, defining, seeking your natural gift, and then turning that natural gift into spiritual gift. Or some of you may already have transformed your natural gifts into spiritual gifts, and that will be affirming your gift that you're exercising to demonstrate to others. It's a really simple thing. And I strongly encourage that we all do it. I'm going to do it too. I don't think I ever did that test. Wisdom. I wrote the whole book on it. Wisdom. The spiritual gift of wisdom is not conventional wisdom at all. It's not a conventional wisdom of wise people saying something profound, something good. Spiritual gift is completely different than earthly or secular way of defining wisdom. The Bible, the wisdom is referred as a person. It's not just the saying. It's not just a statement. It's not just proverbs. It's in lowercase p. Bible refers wisdom as a person. Proverbs 8.12. I, who's I? Wisdom. Dwell together with prudence. Prudence could be translated somewhat into the topic of discernment that we can talk about, we've been talking about. So who is this I? Well, I is wisdom, very clear in the Bible, right? I, the wisdom. It's like saying, we, the people of the United States, who are we? The people of the United States. I, wisdom. I is Holy Spirit. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, spiritual gift of wisdom is not dependent on age or experience, contrary to what you think. Secular wisdom may depend on experience and gray hair, but spiritual gifts are not dependent on experience and age. As long as you have the Holy Spirit flows through you, even the young people, even the teenager can have the same spiritual gifts of wisdom. That's why I am just floored when I see in YouTube like 13, 14, 15 year old young men and women on the stage giving message. I'm just totally floored. They do a much better job than adults. If you think that you are too young to have wisdom, or you, didn't, you don't think you were born with wisdom, listen to what God has to say about this. James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, okay, listen carefully. If you think you lack wisdom, it's not about getting old. It's not about dyeing your hair gray. If, you, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives how generously to all without finding faults in you, and it will be given to you. Wow. That's why it's a gift. It was a gift. Generously. Most of parents, depending on their budget, if the kid says, I really need this mom and dad, they will give generously as long as it's within their budget. Therefore, if you don't think you have the spiritual gift of wisdom, don't simply dismiss it. It is important that you get wisdom. You are commanded to get wisdom. How? And why is this important? God says, get wisdom at all costs. That's command to us. Proverbs 34, 7. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Simple, done. Okay, it's not your choice. You understand that? And you go through, ah, wisdom is not my thing. It's Ben's thing. It's 
looks things. No, it's not. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Sell. If you have to sell everything, sell everything. If you can trade between the wisdom and then you've got all this stuff that you've been accumulating over your lifetime, it says, if you don't think you have this, but you got this, what it said, though it costs all you have, get wisdom. That's how important it is. So ask God to give this gift to you. He will give to you generously. Because the wisdom comes from heaven above. Not from age or not from experience. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. What is wisdom? James 3.17. Listen to this one very carefully. But the wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle, and at all times, not once in a while, all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no favoritism and always sincere. The scripture says, it comes from above. It's a pure, peace-loving and gentle. How often? All the times. Willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and good deeds, giving them no favoritism and very, very sincere. These attributes, aren't they describing who Jesus is? Yes. I, comma, wisdom, comma, dwells with prudence. Wisdom is Jesus. Wisdom is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, God says to us, get wisdom at all costs. In summary, God gives us gifts. The same gift from the same spirit. It started with grace that was given to us, that which was based on love. And when you say to God now that I want to live out your ways, God, when you confess to God, when you pray to God and say, God, I want to live out your ways, you now know what that way is. God gave you gifts, and he will give you additional gifts so that you can love your neighbor as yourself. We are all in a position to receive additional gifts. Only if your purpose is in line with God's purpose, which is to help and serve others. That is, once again, in summary, spiritual gifts are for strengthening the faith of others. It's not for one's benefit. It is to love others. It means to extend his love using the gifts that we have freely received from our God. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you.